And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're here with us. We're here every week meeting interesting people and uh, discussing topical ideas. And hey, this is an anniversary show. This is a happy anniversary to Well, you. you know, usually when I hear that, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is today my anniversary? But no, <laughs> but I understand we're talking about our show and we've been uh, doing this for quite some time. Nine, nine years. This is our ninth anniversary. You see, do it every week. We've been doing it every week for nine years. It's kind of amazing to think about. It, it is. I think we're going we're gonna to catch Bonanza here. It's one of the longest running 30 minute shows of all time if we yeah, don't watch it. You, you're getting to look like Hoss Cartwright as it is. <laughs> well, we have a guy today who you and I have known a long time. Indeed. And, uh, I know we both admire very much and we're very appreciative to have Tom McDaniel, the president of Oklahoma City University, on our show. Yeah, he's got a lot to talk about. He's got a lot going on, as always, and he's a wonderful guest. We'd be looking forward to hearing from him. It's coming up today on The Verdict. A greener planet, cleaner air, a healthy economy, national security, a smaller deficit and a stronger dollar, green jobs, better jobs, energy independence, warmth and light and transportation. These are the reasons Chesapeake champions natural gas every day. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we have an old friend joining us on our ninth anniversary show who started his uh, current uh, employment nine years ago as well. Uh, Tom McDaniel is the president of Oklahoma City University. Uh, he uh, will retire from that position uh, July 1st of, the, of this year. He started out his career after uh, OU uh, Law School in private practice, uh, then was director of, the administrative director of state courts as appointed by the Supreme Court. Then went to Kerr McGee and uh, had a long, uh, very illustrious career, uh, career there, uh, retiring as vice chairman of the board. And in 2001 was selected as president of Oklahoma City University and has served there with distinction, making great strides for that university. And uh, he's going to retire and we're here to talk to him about what's been going on at OCU and what will be going on. Welcome back. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. Yeah. Thank you. You know, the university seems to be in pretty good shape as you uh, get ready to step down. Well, I think it is. Uh, I think every university, public and private in America, has felt the pinch of the economic downturn that we've all seen. But we're in really good shape financially, and we've had to tighten our belts some, but from a, an assets uh, standpoint, we're in great shape. Now, you, in your uh, tenure, you uh, shepherded, uh, I think, a very successful uh, long-range fund drive for the university, did you not? Well, actually, two. We, we did one in connection with our centennial in 2004. That's we raised $100 thinking. million, dollars, yeah. and then when we, when we were able to get that completed, we started a $50 million drive that we completed in January. So both of those have been uh, done, and we're very proud of that. And the capital improvements that have been made on the campus, you know, don't expect you can list all of them, but in general, uh, the improvements have been made over the last 10 years consist of what? Well, we built a new business school, the Minder School of Business, the Wandale Bass Music Center. Both of those are iconic buildings on our campus. We've redone the student center. We have a new school of dance. We have a new dormitory, new softball field, and on. And we've got three projects that are uh, that we're in the middle of now uh, that uh, are 
resulting from some of these good things. Hmm. Well, talk about your student body a little bit, about its size, its diversity, uh, how many live on campus, how many live off, and, and the like. Sure. We have uh, about 4,000 students, uh, about 36, 3,700 full-time equivalent. We have, uh, we have night programs in uh, business for uh, an MBA, and we also have Oklahoma's only night law school, as you know. So we have a fair number, uh, as most, uh, most institutions that are located in cities do, of uh, part-time students. So uh, about 4,000. The diversity is great. We started uh, a, a program called the Clara Looper Scholars Program, which uh, Clara Looper helped us institute, and it's really uh, been a success on our campus of attracting uh, schools from uh, students from schools that would normally uh, not be able to attend a private university, and so that's really helped us a lot. And we have a very diverse uh, student body. The international component, I know, is also something that Oklahoma City University has been proud of, and there's yes. been all sorts of immigration issues that have affected private schools across the country uh, as for the national consequences of 9-11. Of How has Oklahoma City University kind of worked through that, and, and what, can you, what kind of feedback can you give us as, as citizens about what is the uh, appropriate measures to take to ensure the safety of this country, but at the same time bring in quality students to universities throughout the country? Well, I don't know that I have the solution to the immigration problem, but I will say that it certainly had an impact on us uh, after 9-11, but we have been able to work through that. Uh, the areas that we have, uh, we have uh, students coming from virtually are countries all around the world. We have a good number of students from India, China, Taiwan, uh, those Asian, in, in Asian countries. Uh, we are... Uh, uh, have had very good success with maintaining the level of students we've had there. Uh, they're attracted, I think, to our MBA program and to our computer sciences program more than, more than anything else. But we also bring in students from around the world for our performing arts programs. And so our, our success has been uh, not impacted adversely by the mm -hmm. conditions. Uh, I grew up almost uh, across the street from Oklahoma City University as a child in Oklahoma City because uh, my grandparents lived on 23rd Street and their house faced the, the then campus. And the main thing I remember most about it was the Gold Star Building. Yes. Uh, you've been on two or three times and we've talked about the Gold Star Building, but what are the current, what's the current utilization of it and what are the plans for it, if any? Well, uh, we have a law school that's located in the Starkey's Law Center and all of the faculty and the uh, the uh, law library is uh, contained in the Gold Star Building. It is the iconic uh, building on our campus and we plan continued use of it. Uh, we are considering a move downtown for our law school and if we do that uh, we will use the Gold Star Building for a seminary. We have a seminary that we started on campus that's now in its second year, 25 students first year, 50 this year, we see it getting to be about 200 students, and we think we would use the Gold Star Building for that purpose. And uh, for our viewers, in case they don't know, the OCU is affiliated with the United Methodist Church? That's right. United Methodist Church uh, is our affiliation. Uh, talk more about the moving of the law school downtown, if you will. What would, why would OCU be interested in, in moving uh, from 23rd Street down to Main Street, if you will, uh, with the law school? Well. We would like to have uh, improved facilities, and we'd like to have uh, more space for our students, and we would also like to have space for other uh, projects that give students other opportunities. And I would just say that uh, pro bono work for, for students is, uh, is something that's very important to our law school. Uh, in addition to that, we've just announced the initiation of an Innocence Project. We had John Grisham on our campus to speak, so we'll be starting that. So first and foremost, to improve our facilities, and secondly, to uh, uh, give more space to the programs that we'd like to start. Now, having said that, there's nothing wrong with having a law school on campus. We like that a lot. <laughs> but we've been given an opportunity that we think is a great option for us to move into an old historic building that uh, a developer is willing to spend a substantial amount of money. And what that does do for us, Kent Mick, is it gives us an opportunity to have our students down where the legal community 
of our state is, is particularly concentrated. So having the opportunity for internships for our students, uh, three courthouses very close, uh, we'd like to see the western side of, uh, of the downtown develop into a, a concentration of, of legal areas, much like the eastern side has been for the medical uh, community. And if we're able to do that, we think that'll be great for our students. Well, there's no question about that. How have you seen education at, 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 the, at the highest levels changing over the nine years that you've been president of Oklahoma City University? Well, I think there continues to be uh, the, the issue in higher education of accessibility to everyone that wants it and to make it possible in the face of rising costs. Yeah. Uh, you have, to, uh, you have to, to certainly be competitive to attract great faculty. And in our, in our instance, uh, as a private school that receives no public funding to make us competitive for the top students, we have to continue to raise our endowment. So making, making uh, a high quality private school education with small classes and personal attention uh, in, a, in a tough economic environment, I think is our toughest challenge. Let me jump in and get us to a break. Much more to talk about with President Tom McDaniel of Oklahoma City University. You're watching The Verdict. I remember walking into the academy and seeing the Highway Patrol core values, you know, the professionalism, you know, the courage, the bravery, integrity, and I realized that those are some of the same qualities that I was taught by my grandmother that the Chickasaw Nation valued in their people. We had uh, received calls of heavy, heavy rain. I mean, it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen in my life. We had seen the white pickup truck with the two elderly people in it. There was no means of escape. And looking down at these people, you know, you could see the terror in their eyes. And we knew we had to make a move or, or these people would probably die. And I reached down and grabbed their arm to help pull them up. I remember thinking, these people are going to live. You know, this is going to work out. I appreciate this citation, but that's what we do. That's what we're expected to do. I'm glad that I was able to carry on that tradition of bravery and courage under strife. The oil and natural gas industry help provide a revenue that uh, feeds our schools, uh, providing a better education for not only my kids, but uh, for the children all over the state. It will allow the schools to buy better equipment, we'll be able to hire qualified teachers, and all around to have a better educational experience. The future has never been brighter for our students here. We should be very proud of the oil and gas industry in Oklahoma. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers visiting with Tom McDaniel, the president of Oklahoma City University. Tom, uh, for years and years, Oklahoma City University has had the reputation of having, if not the best performing arts program collegiately in the United States, certainly one of the top two or three. Now, I know that doesn't happen by accident, uh, uh, getting a distinction like that. How did that come about at Oklahoma City University? Well, it, has, it isn't something that started in the last few years. It's yeah. something that we've been building on for 50 years or more and it results from two primary things. One is uh, a commitment to, to excellence, uh, and that requires us getting great faculty, and we have some really wonderful teachers there. For example, Florent Birdwell, who has uh, taught both Kristen Chenoweth and Kelly O'Hara and a good number of others as well. And then secondly, the ability to attract great students uh, from Oklahoma and far beyond. We have national auditions and people flying from around the country. And so I think it's that uh, competition for the scholarship money, the endowment that creates those scholarships, and great faculty, of, uh, that's what's produced those programs. Now, Florence Birdwell, um, an interesting article uh, in the last two or three weeks about her and uh, problems with her voice as a singer. She was yes. a singer and lost her voice, couldn't sing, and decided yes. to teach. And has, of course, I guess been one of the premier teachers in the United States. Uh, She's well, still she, uh, active, I take it. She is. I see her every week. She is quite active. Uh, in fact, uh, Kelly O'Hara is going to be on our campus in just a few days coming back. Uh, Florence has invited her back. She's going to do uh, a benefit for Deer Creek Public School Foundation 
to raise some money for them. That's where she graduated from high school. Yeah. And uh, April the tenth, I think that's a Saturday, and I've got tickets for you guys if you want to come. <laughs> she's, uh, I think she's as good as there is in the world now. As you know, she starred and been a Tony nominee, so she's doing great. Mm -hmm. yeah, and she's fact, been I, on this show. Yes. In fact, I saw her in South Pacific on on Broadway. Just, just wonderful. She's just great, and uh, we're and she's just as great a person. Mm -hmm. She's coming back. She's always good about coming back to help. Yeah. Well, um, this. The, 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 um, the, the school also has uh, a great reputation with the Steinway uh, program. Can you elaborate on that and, and talk about what a special opportunity that is for the school and its association with the Steinway company? Well, I will. I, I can't say Steinway without saying Wanda Bass. Yeah. Uh, Wanda Bass uh, offered us the opportunity to become an all-Steinway school. As you might uh, surmise, I didn't know much about that. And uh, Wadden Bass and Mark Parker, the dean of our music school, and I went to Steinway and Sons of New York, and we became the largest purchaser in the 175-year history of Steinway. We bought 110 Steinways, cost about two and a half million dollars, and, and Mrs. Bass paid for every one of them, and then uh, decided we needed one at the business school, so she gave one to Herman Minders. So I think we're the only business school in the country that has a Steinway in the lobby. And uh, she also left an endowment for us to maintain those. And what that does for us is it makes our students play on the finest musical instruments in the world. That's well, that's an incredible. example of the commitment you mentioned earlier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about your athletic teams. You know, you've had a, a lot of success there in your tenure. We've got 37 national championships and uh, both our men's and women's basketball teams both uh, uh, qualified for the national tournaments. Neither one of them won it. Uh, Oklahoma Baptist University men won and I offer my congratulations to them. They're rivals but they played great. Okay. Uh, we also have had a great year in uh, volleyball, wrestling uh, and uh, uh, things that go on in the fall. Spring sports are great for us. We have uh, national championship caliber teams in both baseball and softball and I might say golf. Our women's uh, golf team has won five straight national championships and our men five of the last seven. So uh, athletics, good thing for us. The thing that probably interests the mayor the most is that we have a great rowing program. I was going to ask you about it. <laughs> yeah, we, Talk a little uh, bit about it. Well, I'm very excited about that. The credit goes to Mike Knopp, our coach, who I think by any measures is an extraordinarily visionary young man who's far, be, far more to us than a uh, rowing coach. But we have a rowing program that probably has 75 or 80 uh, students from all around the country, uh, all good students. It's a great fit for us because they're academically solid and they uh, represent us well in national events. Now one program that you initiated fairly recently that got a lot of pre press, I guess because it's a little unusual, is the uh, women's wrestling yes. program. Our wrestling coach, uh, Archie Randall uh, came to me and said uh, that women's wrestling was going to be an Olympic sport and that to some degree has been our focus to try to to try to focus on having sports that uh, eventually are in, held in the Olympics. So that's been a focus for us. So we started that and it's attracted probably 25 young women from around the country, uh, one of whom was a National Merit Scholar. And so we're, we're delighted to have them on our campus, and they won the national championship this year. How, how many schools around the country have a program? I'm going to say 20. Uh, Texas has uh, high school women's wrestling. They have probably five or 6,000, and that's our main source of uh, students who do that. But we have them from all over the country. Well, let, let me change the subject a little bit. Let's talk about a very recent appointment that you have received uh, as chairman of the uh, MAPS-3 Oversight Committee uh, for the uh, overseeing, uh, as it indicates, of the MAPS-3 program, its development and, and the like. Uh, congratulations to you on that selection, and uh, I would assume you approach that with some uh, trepidation. Well, uh, don't talk him out of it, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was uh, flattered to be asked by the mayor to serve in this capacity, mm -hmm. and I'm very excited to serve. Uh, the timing is good for me. As you've already mentioned, I'll be stepping away from the presidency at OCU uh, on June the 30th, and so I will have more time, and I think this is a job that's going to require uh, more time uh, and commitment than just any civic opportunity, and I was a big supporter of MAPS. I think it's a transformational time in the in the history of our city, 
and I am just as, as excited as I could be to be a part of this, and uh, I look forward to working on it. Tell me just generally, or tell our viewers generally, what an oversight committee of this uh, sort does. Uh, what kind of uh, power does it uh, wield or uh, advice does it give? Well, I've got the expert on this on my <laughs> left, but, I, but I've read the ordinance, and as I understand it, it would be our, our duty to advise. We're not a decision-making group, but we are going to be, in addition to the oversight committee, there will be seven additional committees that will focus on the different areas, for example, the river, the convention center, and those sorts of things. So I see ours as being uh, uh, an organization that uh, will help ensure that the citizens of Oklahoma City get what they bargained for in MAPS 3, that we will be an advisory group that will manage the, the activities of these committees and then report to the mayor and city council and give them our view about it. There will be uh, much to do, and uh, as I say, I think that it is, a, it is a wonderful process that's been outlined by the ordinance, and we support it. Well, we're excited about it too. I know, I know it out of City Hall, and uh, the, the taxation started on April 1 for MAPS, and it continues for seven years, nine months. It, as Tom mentioned, it's, it's an intricate process, and in that we have this Citizen Advisory Board, which advises the City Council on direction. Our city staff also rolls up its sleeves and gets into this. There's a tremendous amount of information that, that's, that's percolated up, and, and uh, you know, we look at best practices around the, around the country. And uh, we also have, a, I, I think, a, 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 with the good fortune of having such a good track record of having run maps and you know, in the finishing stages of Maps for Kids. So, uh, you know, f from a, the perspective of we've kind of, uh, we've kind of got this down, I think we've got a I very solid system in place of checks and balances and citizen over oversight over their tax dollars and advising the council in the best ways they can be spent. So you never want to take your eye off the ball and certainly this is no time for that to be done and that's one of the reasons we wanted someone like Tom to, to be in that uh, administrative position with that advisory board and try to, to make sure we get these things uh, started on track. Well you've been the administrator of all the courts in the state of Oklahoma. You've been administrator of uh, primary administrator of two universities in this uh, city and a, and a huge law department at Kerr-McGee. Your experience does bode you well for what you're about to embark on. Well, I hope so. I, I'm, I'm thinking that uh, we want an orderly process that's transparent and collaborative and, and want to ensure the integrity of the process, and that's the kind of stuff I like to do. <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm very anxious about it. Getting back to OCU and kind of wrapping up in the, in the final stages of your tenure there as the university's president, you've been, you and Brenda have been very active with the students. I, the, the times that I have seen you interact with the students, I'm just amazed at, at what on, a, on a seemingly a first name basis and the relationships that you have cultivated with what has to be a, a difficult task of, of, of communicating with several thousand students on a, on, a, on a daily basis. How do you do that? Well, we work at it, and Brenda's really great at it. We have them in our home. We have something called OCU Chats, where we invite every month, we have a dinner and invite students over to our home, and of course you get to know them, and, and we go to a lot of activities. Now, I go to a lot of ball games and performing arts venues, and I'll just say that uh, the connection with the students has made this uh, a wonderful time in our life and it is uh, the thing that has made it work for us is that opportunity to engage with those students. So we've loved it mm -hmm. and we work at it. Well, well the, certainly the, the city and the university have benefited. Did you want to say anything about well, it Well, just that uh, the university is uh, far better shape now than it was when you took over. Not that it was in bad shape then, it wasn't. But you're to be uh, commended for the outstanding work you've done at Oklahoma City. Yeah. Thank you. We're well, pleased you'd be here. And to the extent this is Verdict's uh, salute to Tom McDaniel and his tenure at OCU and, and trying to help provide the transition to, to the rest of your life. And uh, we wish you and Brenda well, and uh, I'll be working with you on MAPS uh, 3 and look forward to that process. I do as well. Thank you, Mr. We'll Mayor. have you back. Thank you, Kent. Thank you. All right. That's going to do it for this show. Kent and I'll be back and wrap it up in just a moment. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa. 
where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And for almost 30 years, Oklahoma political government and business leaders have turned to the McCarville Report for accurate, reliable, inside information. Visit the McCarville Report online. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers here wrapping up the show that we uh, visited with Tom McDaniel, the president of Oklahoma City University. Yes, Tom is closing out a really distinguished career as president of Oklahoma City University on July 1st. Uh, he'll be succeeded by uh, the Honorable Robert Henry, who's now uh, the chief judge of the Tenth Circuit the Court of Appeals in Denver, uh, former dean of the OCU Law School. But today was devoted to Tom and uh, his uh, illustrious career, a real people person and a person who has taken uh, uh, the great standards of uh, OCU to even higher levels. Mm -hmm. I guess it's in as good a shape as it's ever been, and not that it was in poor shape when Tom took over, but he has certainly elevated and made this a very high profile and something the citizens of Oklahoma City can be very proud to share the name with the, with the school. Yeah, I went through law school with Tom, and he's always had a great sense of timing. And here he gets $100 million and a $50 million fund drive out of the way just before the recession hits. <laughs> now that's good timing. <laughs> Indeed it is. We wish Tom and Brenda well. And, in uh, their, their uh, efforts uh, in, uh, once they move beyond Oklahoma City University. Have a couple of website addresses I'd love to give to you. OKCU.edu is how you can get a hold of Tom McDaniel. And of course our website, theverdict.tv. We'd love to hear a story idea or a show idea that you might have. So send it to us. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.